using social media for being a little more social. Connecting with new friends. Game day, just an Amtrak away. All right, everybody, welcome in. If you're wondering what this is, this is a completely new thing. I'm Brian. That's the quarterback. You know him. He's Kyle McCord. Here's what we're doing every Tuesday throughout the season. This is the first of our 12. This is. This is not my show. This is his show. This is the Kyle McCord show. Kyle, how's it feel? You got your own show. This is a pretty big step up here. I like it. We're off to a hot start. I like it. So what we're what we're going to do here is we welcome you into Q Sports Talk. Uh, it'll be Tuesdays at 11. Kyle's a busy Kyle's a busy guy. Like You got class. You got practice. You got games. He's got a lot going on. So Tuesdays at 11, uh, we're going to have Kyle live here. Get in the chat. Subscribe, as always, to Q Sports Talk here on the Twitch. Get in the chat. Let your questions fly. We're going to we're gonna rip it up here for a little bit, but we're going to be paying attention to the questions. We'll get to that as uh, we go along. So uh, any questions you have for Kyle, toss them in the chat, and uh, we will uh, get to them throughout. Future weeks, Kyle, we're going to get some of your guys on, I think. We'll, go. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, I could talk to your guys. I think people want to see you talk to your guys. Yeah, I, I think that's going to be good. That's going to be good going forward. So we look forward to uh, that. But uh, fill it up in the chat. Uh, let your questions out. We'll keep Kyle here for, uh, you know, 20 minutes, half hour or so every week. And uh, uh, we'll get it going. Here we are, man. Football season, right? This is this is the fun time of the year, huh? Yeah. It's finally that time. Yeah. It's been a long off season. And a crazy off season for you, right? How, how What stands out to you from the last nine months as like, like the biggest, what what just happened in my life moment? Like what, yeah. what is going on right now? I mean, I still remember uh, flying down to the the bowl game uh, in Boca and sitting in that locker room after and Coach France talking to us, obviously. Uh, bowl game didn't go great, to say the least. Uh, no, we, we try to forget about that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just now, fast forward nine months, like, you know, guys that uh, I barely knew or like mm-hmm. my best friends and, and we're getting ready to go out and, um, you know, play season together. So it's exciting. I think that's one of the more interesting parts of what we've seen here over the last nine months. What you said there is that a, a lot of times, I mean, C- Colorado's like the craziest example, right? Like their whole team changed over that. Like that doesn't happen. But this team's about what half and half of guys that were back, new guys in, some like you in the portal, some freshmen that I- enrolled early. That can be tricky, right? Like mm-hmm. when, when you're all right, freshman to sophomore to junior to senior, you know people, you welcome in a few, and you move on. What was that like turning these like three, four very different groups of people into what you guys got right now? Yeah, I think it's a combination of a few things. Um, I feel like the biggest thing uh, is the weight room. I feel like we had a really tough off season, mm-hmm. and I think when you're going through a tough workout um, with you know a bunch of guys, you naturally get closer. Mm-hmm. And then I think on top of that, Coach Fran. Uh, made it a point to to bring us closer together this off season by just having us do stuff off the field, mm-hmm. um, whether that was community service or just uh, a team event and hanging out with each other, like whatever the case may be. We spent a lot of time around each other, and I feel like really it was probably the end of January, beginning of February when I really started to get tight with them. Like it, it happened pretty quickly, and then now it feels like you know I've known the guys forever. Yeah, and it's it's only been eight months, right? Like seven, eight months for some of these guys. It must feel like a lot longer at yeah, this point. Yeah, no, I think just the, the amount of time that we spent in that facility, it definitely uh, it feels like it's been way longer than, than that. And I feel like uh, we're all ready to go and uh, count down the days now. Uh, so, you know, get, getting getting close. Uh, four. We're at four. I, I started a countdown at 100, Kyle, so I've been counting for <laughs> It stretched my math abilities. We've been counting for a really, really... It was late May. It's, it was too much counting. Yeah. We, we shouldn't do that much counting, but uh, I, I think that goes to tell you the anticipation here. We were just talking about it before we started. Like, you were out at basketball games, and, you know, people are talking football. We, we've never seen an off season like this. What, what was it like from that perspective? Community, to people talking to you, and what kind of excitement did you sense out there? Yeah, I mean, from from my perspective, like, that's kind of all I knew Syracuse to be. I mean, when I got here, all the fans were, were super excited. Um, you know, just like, like I said, going to a basketball game and people are talking about the football season, how excited they are and they can't wait. Um, you know, wearing football jerseys to, mm-hmm. to basketball, like it was sweet. Uh, but then guys who have been on the team for a while, like, uh, JB and Marla Wax and Aranda, like they're like, it's never been like this before. Like the, the anticipation is at an all time high. And so, um, you know, I think everybody's excited. Uh, I feel like, Everything's kind of been building to this moment from the time Fran took the job. And so now it's 
you know, like I said, just counting down the days, getting ready to get going. Uh, yeah, those three, I feel, are a pretty important trio to, to mention. Uh, they all announced they were coming back. Like, they all did it, like, on Christmas or, like, the day after. Yeah. I, I, they they got to stay clear of the holidays, but that, <laughs> that, that's okay. So, to, to get those three back, what did that signal to the rest of you? That, like, okay, these, is, these are probably the three best or short list, the three most important guys from last year's team that, like, collectively, they're like, we like what this guy's about. We want to be a part of this thing, too. Yeah. Um, I feel like those three were, were definitely the leaders of the team last year, and for them to make their decision to come back, I feel like speaks volumes of what they think that this team can be, um, especially, you know, with Fran coming in. Uh, a lot of those guys had the opportunity to go to the NFL or, you know, transfer to, you know, a, a big-time program and uh, you know, get paid a lot of money, but mm -hmm. they wanted to see it through. And I feel like for me, like that, that was really telling. Like when you have three guys of that caliber all making the decision to come back when they could leave or, or do whatever they want, um, I feel like that just lets you know, okay, like we, we're going to have a, a legit chance to be really good this year. Uh, and certainly they all had opportunities. So, hey, the opportunities find you, whether you've told people you're looking for them or not, right. I, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. Regardless of your names uh, in the portal. All right, we got a poll question up here on, on Q Sports Talk. Uh, we're asking people what celebration they want to see you hit. What Do you got an end zone move? What's what's your move? <laughs> uh, I mean, I've, I've mostly only uh, just actually I've never – ran okay. a, a, a touchdown in before um did so, you have one when you throw one or you... yeah no when i when i throw one uh usually pulling uh the arrow the out arrow? okay yeah i mean that's that's a little played out at this point uh so maybe coming up uh, with with something else but uh, i got something up my sleeve uh knock on wood when i run one in this year at some point okay okay so a little uh we, we got to get you in one does it at least it, it, is just a sneak good enough do we need like a a, a long or like do you have a distance limit on this or? i don't know I, I think i don't think i could pull it out for a quarterback sneak okay but if i i run one in yeah. All right. So we'll keep an eye on that and maybe shoot in the air or something. Well, we got to figure out something for these uh, these touchdown passes. May can it takes a lot of work. You could coordinate different ones with the different players. That that could be a Yeah. I don't know if that's what too time consuming. Yeah. Well, I think the what the, depending if a ref throws a flag or not, like if you celebrate with a teammate, they won't throw it. But, ah. if, but if you celebrate on your own, they will. They will throw it. So it's almost more important to coordinate. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, so no, Fran, we have to be working on this exactly. right now. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we want to save our, ourselves the 15 yard penalty. We, we needed like an hour of practice today. To, yeah. Because we saw in the all access thing, um, not this week, but last week, uh, your special teams guys have uh, special handshakes with mm -hmm. uh, everybody. Yeah. Like everybody in the world. Yeah. Brady, the the kicker, yeah. Brady Dannenberg, and Jack Stonehouse, the punter. Uh, they get to the team meeting. Uh, the door probably like. 15 minutes before the team meeting starts mm -hmm. and they have a handshake with everybody. Do they both have one with everybody or do they like split it up? It, no, it's like they both have one. It's probably like 300 different handshakes. They all I don't know how you remember it's impressive. All, yeah. it's impressive. Uh, they do have a, a little extra time at practice when you guys are, are, are out there uh, working. Uh, Stonehouse, I, I love Jack Stonehouse. He's a, a ridiculous human being. My guy. It, it, does he ever roll a shirt down? Like ever? No, no, okay. never. So that's not just for us. That's no. That's never. All I mean, time. he he doesn't. I don't think he wears uh, a shirt underneath his pads. No. So, <laughs> so when uh, like we had practice uh, at the dome uh, on Saturday, and so the the bus drops us off, and like we did like the little quad walk, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's not wearing it. Like he's just. Carrying his pads, no shirt on, just <laughs> letting it fly. I respect it. I mean, uh, a, a, a punters are punters are people too, as we've heard. They're yep. they're, they're a little bit different. Uh, the hope is we, we don't need to see him that much this or he's just out there holding him. Yeah, right. Yeah, I told him my goal is for him not to see the field as as much as he did last year. So it's a weird goal to have, right? Like the the season's going well when your job doesn't matter. Yeah, so exactly. Like you, you hang out over there. Yeah, doing exactly. It. His mustache seems back to normal. I, yeah. I think he re dyed it back. He dyed it orange at the beginning of camp yeah. uh trying to get other guys on the team to follow unsuccessful okay um but he's back to normal now all right we, we had a deal with fran it was the day day before camp started two days before camp started uh it was that week and robert wright was all the assistants were there robert had a, a, a big bushy stash going as well um uh, fran said that he promised jack he was gonna like diet or something once and then like get rid of it did, did this mm. ever happen i don't know if this ever happened i think he, he told jack because a lot of the guys uh at the beginning of camp did mustaches yeah uh jb elijah clark uh fidel Diggs, like they all they all did it and 
Coach Fran was like, yeah, I'll do it. And then he, he <laughs> saw the, the guys come in the next day with their mustache. He's like, nah, I, like, I can't. Like, <laughs> he's like, I got to keep my wife interested. I don't, like, if I have a mustache, she might leave me. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he's got other things to worry about, right, than, uh, than you guys in college. It, it is uh, it is craziness. Again, if you guys want any questions here in the chat, Kyle's going to be here all weekly. We're going to do this every week. Uh, when, when the season goes on, we'll either get other guys here with us. We'll get them uh, on a video call uh, with us so Kyle can give us a little insight on his on his teammates. Here's one from the chat. We, we talk a lot about you, you know, being in the cues from the perspective of football, which obviously is the main reason you're here. What, what have you noticed out in the community? Have you found any places to eat, get out? Like if you had any free time or what, what, what have you gotten out and done here in the yeah. case? Um, downtown's been, been really fun. So I, I stay downtown. Um, a lot of really good restaurants. LM social, uh, is kind of my spot to be. Okay. Um, so that's been, that's been really good. And then I, I think, uh, the golf, uh, was, was a lot of fun, uh, this off season, uh, golfing with guys like JB and, uh, Brady, um, you know, competing out there, talking trash to each other. Like it, it got competitive, uh, this summer, but it was fun. Uh, it was a lot of fun. So that was really like the, the two, the two main things like, you know, we would work out in the morning, um, you know, watch film, do everything we needed to do, and then go out and play golf, talk trash to each other. So it was fun. It was a good time. Yeah, who's the best golfer? I'm going to say myself. Um, I'm sure if uh, JB and, and Brady were here, they would say themselves, but uh, it kind of depends on the day. Okay. Yeah, it's it's very rare the answer is not um – a quarterback, a kicker, or a punter. Yeah, right. It's it's almost always one yeah. of one of uh, those three going back. We saw in the all access uh, last week. I think you and JB going out and, and playing. I don't yeah. know if that was your best day. They did me dirty. Yeah, or they, they, no. did they not show your good shots? They, like what was that? I, I feel like that was like a, a low light. Like no no highlights. Of just all bad shots, miss putts, bad drives. So my uh, a few of my my buddies from back home texted me because they were watching the show and they're like bro you're trash <laughs> and i was like no they i promise you i've been playing better uh but i mean that's that's you have days like that sometimes yeah well because the scores you and justin were talking about at the end did not match up with the shots that's what i'm up. saying I'm like that like no I, I just watched him shoot 100 and he's talking about like in the 80s no, here. I, yeah th this is not this is not mathing in my head this is not mathing. All right, uh, Katie wants to know did, did you celebrate national dog day yesterday you're a dog guy i am a dog guy uh I would feel bad if I got a dog right now at this point in my life. Mm. I feel like the dog would just be sitting in the apartment all day. Uh, but my parents have a dog back home, and as soon as I graduate college, I'll, I'll get one. Okay, there we are. Well, what's your dog at home? Uh, she is a rescue, a uh, little bit of everything. Um, so my parents got her um, for pretty much nothing. Uh, so but she's great. She's she's the best. All right. Shout out to the uh, canine jamboree. We've got that coming up here in a, a few weeks with a bunch of rescue dogs uh, about town in the Syracuse. Be sure to check that out. Uh, here's one from uh, May Mayamo. Mayomo. May it's fun trying to figure out what people are doing with their screen names here. I'm going to go with Mayamo23. Uh, he says, Kyle, no pressure. Uh, my dad has not been to a game since McNabb was here. So, <laughs> so that there's the start on that. Uh, but uh, please keep the wins coming. Uh, Mayamo's dad's really excited. Noted. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so it hasn't been. That's McNabb, so that's 98. We're going on, uh, what is it, 2024? Yeah, we're going on 26 years. And we talk about the preseason. Like, when I bring up preseason, offseason talk, like people haven't talked about it. Like, there's been good seasons, not good seasons. People haven't talked about it like this since McNabb was here. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> how crazy is that? Like, at Ohio State, it's every year, right? It doesn't change. Yeah. Like, how crazy does that hit you when you're hearing, like, yeah, we haven't talked this way in almost 30 years? Yeah. Um, like I, I said to you before, I mean, I, for me, that's all I know for, for the Syracuse fan base. Um, just extremely excited about the football team. Um, extremely excited about what Coach Fran is doing. Um, and so that's all I've known. And then, um, you know, guys on the team who have been here before, like telling me, like, it's never been like this before. And so kind of having that energy, it's exciting. It's motivating. Um, you know, when you, you run into somebody at, you know, like Costco or whatever, and they're talking about how excited they are for the season. Like that's, mm -hmm. you know, that, that I, I feel like guys really thrive off of that. And, um, especially with how long the off season is, sometimes you can kind of lose track of, um, you know, exactly why you're doing it. And then, um, you know, having that little reminder, uh, is just motivation, you know, to, to keep going and, and knowing that, you know, all the work that you're putting in that 
people necessarily don't see, like it's going to come to light pretty soon. All right. Uh, here's one from Nottingham JJ. This is an interesting question. I, I don't know if I've heard you talk about this yet. What has it been like to have the headset communication? What, what's that yeah. been like and how, how different is it? It's been awesome. Um, I feel like uh, it's long overdue in my opinion. Yeah. Um, NFL's had it for what, yeah, exactly. 20, 20, 25 years. Yeah, but I think to have it, it's going to raise uh, the level of play um, on offense and defense because both sides will have it. Uh, but for me at least to hear uh, what Coach Nixon has to say in the headset up to it's in a cutout at 15 seconds on the play clock. But, mm -hmm. I mean, he can tell me the play. Um, you know, tell me what defense he's expecting. Like he can tell me as much as he wants up until, mm -hmm. up until it cuts out. Um, but I think it just makes my job easier. Like I don't have to wait to get the signal from the sideline. Like I can get in the headset, tell the guys what the play is, get them lined up, get them set. Um, and I feel like for the defense, it's going to be the same. Like, um, I think Marlowe's wearing it on defense. And so to have the, the middle linebacker, be able to hear what the defensive coordinator is thinking, like, okay, you know, second and short, like I'm expecting a shot here, whatever the case may be. Um, so I, I feel like it's just going to, uh, like I said, raise the, the level of play. Um, but it's been great. I mean, Coach Nixon, obviously coming from the NFL, mm -hmm. um, has been around it a lot. And so it was kind of a na natural transition uh, for him. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great idea in theory, and these things work most of the time, right? So, so wireless audio goes a little wonky at some times. Mm -hmm. Like, how, how easy is it to actually literally hear what he's saying? And have you been able to practice it with, like, noise and stuff? Yeah, so we uh, we started practicing uh, this week with crowd noise. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it's, it's been good. Uh, we... Uh, took it to the dome uh, to practice as well, um, and it was good there too. Um, and I'm sure, like at, at some point, it'll go down or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. uh, so still have to know uh, the signals, but um, you know, so far so good. Let's say realistically, I mean, you on offense, you're not really going to have to deal with noise probably until the NC State game. So that's like game six. So you, you got a moment to get used to it. Marlowe, it's the opposite right on defense. Yeah. Like the defensive guys in the home game, he'll be the one struggling. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So when the, the defense was on the field uh, at practice, uh, Coach Fran knew what he was doing, you know, crank the speakers all the way up. Um, so, I mean, it's good to practice, though, um, you know, because uh, like you said, the Dome – it's going to get pretty loud. Uh, yeah, and then, honestly, uh, of my trips to Raleigh, I mean, you'll be playing UNLV. I mean, that's in a massive NFL stadium. I don't I don't know what kind of attendance. Like, the week after you got NC State, wireless signals don't work in that building at all. So it might just – it may just – our, our sideline equipment never worked there back in the day. So we'll, we'll see how that works for you uh, down then. All right, uh, Bowling Ball wants to know this. What what are your expectations in, for the season? Like, what, what kind of team goals and personal goals, and how specific with that have you guys gotten? Uh, I feel like for me, um, and I, I talked to a few of the coaches about it. I mean, the way I, I see things, I feel like if we're winning, that means I'm doing my job mm -hmm. and, um, you know, playing quarterback for, for three years at Ohio state. Um, you know, I feel like the biggest thing is winning and it's not always going to be pretty. Like we had a few games last year, like we played Rutgers, they sat in coverage, uh, pretty much the whole game. And, you know, I was forced to throw the ball underneath and check it down and we ran the ball, but we won. And, and at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Um, and I feel like with, with the team we have, um, you know, I think that uh, we're good enough to win every game on the schedule, but at the same time, if we don't show up, we can lose any game on the schedule. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's, that's really the biggest thing is that like we have the potential to do everything we want. And if I'm doing my job and we're winning, um, I feel like everything else, the awards, the stats, whatever, uh, will take care of itself. All right. Uh, I, I'm going to interrupt you here. I, we're, we're booking guests for my show tomorrow. I'm booking a fantasy football guest. Our guy Jake Seeley from The Athletic on the show tomorrow, people. So we were talking before. Like, do you play fantasy football? Or, or you got one cooking on the team? Like, how, how's this yeah. working? We'll have a draft uh, probably this week uh, coming up. And so I'm when I'm drafting, I'm a little biased. Uh, I'll just choose either guys I, I played with at Ohio State or, okay. um, you know, guys whose game I really like. Um so, uh, but I won my league last year, so it worked. Okay, well, let's see. If you dra if you start drafting guys you played with at Ohio State, like you can put together a really I can put together a really good <laughs> roster. Uh, like, you'll get Marvin here this year. You'll have half the wideouts in the NFL. Well, was was Garrett Wilson there? Did yeah. you, you get a year with yeah, him? Yeah, I mean, I'd have CJ at quarterback. Yeah. CJ Stroud. That's not going to hurt you. Garrett Wilson, Marvin, Chris Olave, Jackson and the Jigba. Um, that's all. Tight end: Kate Stover, Jeremy Ruckert. Um, Defense. I uh, feel like the Saints have a lot of Ohio State guys. Um, I don't think 
I don't think I have a kicker that I played with. Um, Too many touchdowns. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then running back might have to be a reach. I don't. I don't think any of the guys that I've played with at Ohio State are in the league right now. But All right, well, ne- next year if that's when. Yeah, you, Travion Henderson and LaQuint, you can get them in the yeah, next in a year or two. So, Boom. Got it. man, in a couple of years, you're yeah. gonna have a really nice fantasy team. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. What, what, what's this team? They're, they're all my teammates. <laughs> Draft yourself. You know, you can do this right. whole thing. Exactly. Uh, at a few years. So, who, who's the commissioner of uh, the Syracuse r- locker room fantasy league? Who's in charge of this thing? Uh, I think it'll probably be Aronde. Um, okay. Yeah, I think it'll be Aronde. Uh, he he seems pretty fired up about it. Um, I think JB will do it as well. Um, it'll probably, I mean, I, I feel like whenever you get those things going, um, there's always one or two guys that get really competitive and like yeah. talk trash. All right. Who, who's going to take it way over the top? Like, like, dude, <laughs> <laughs> um, you can answer yourself if it's you. No, my, I mean, it depends if we, if we start out and my team just lays an egg and it's an uphill battle, you know, I'll be, you know, crawling to get in the playoffs. But if, if we start out hot. They're gonna know about it. Uh, are you, you gonna be mad if they take your your teammates? Like, if, I mean, listen, if somebody's you got to get it how you can. Yeah, I can't hate on it. All right, there we go. I mean, they're good guys. Like, yeah. I mean, they, I don't know if you should if you're gonna have enough draft picks to yeah, get all exactly. those guys. Like, that's a lot of first few round draft picks right. to get all those Ohio State <laughs> uh, wideouts. All right, so get your questions in the chat here. It's the first Kyle McCord show. Kyle will be with us every uh, Tuesday game week at eleven as we uh, roll on throughout the season. Uh, here's a good New Jersey question for you from our guy Dom and. Uh, North Carolina, checking in uh, live from the mail truck down in uh, North Carolina. Uh, Taylor ham or pork roll? Pork roll. Okay. Is, yeah. Is that what is? Is that a South Jersey, that's North a, Jersey thing? Yeah. Pork roll, South Jersey, Taylor ham. Taylor ham. I don't even know what they call it, North Jersey. Yeah, I think that's because um, I, I have asked our previous uh, Jersey quarterback, Tommy DeVito, who's currently sweating out uh, cut down day with, with the Giants right now. His answer is Taylor Ham because he's North Jersey guy. Yeah, it's the same thing, right? Yeah, it's the same exact thing. Okay. Uh, and what is it? Explain this for our non-Jersey because you can't get this. You cross the border, you can't get it in New York. You can't get it in Philly. Like, really? I don't think no. Oh. Like if you go to try to find yeah. it in Syracuse, good luck. No, you'll you'll find some bacon or sausage. Yeah, it's like a uh, it's like a a breakfast uh, kind of meat. I mean, I put it on um, a bagel with uh, egg and cheese. Okay. Hot sauce. Can't beat it. It's not, I, I'd like to try it. It's just, it takes a little trip. Can't gotta, beat it. Gotta, it's hard to, I'm not really in Jersey. If I'm th- going through Jersey, like you got to drive there. I'm not really there at breakfast time. If right. I'm leaving here. So yeah. it's just not quite. Uh, cry- oh, wait, I do have an update. A uh, Q student in the chat tells me Water Street Bagel, which is a few blocks that way, has, has it. There you go. All right. You'll have to go try it there out. There you go. Yeah. Because uh, we need, like, if I go try it out, like, you, I'm sure, yeah, like, you, I'm sure it's great. Yeah. I, I need you to do it. For a proper, it, I need a comparison. It, yeah. I'll like, give it I, honest, like honest feedback. Like I'm sure it'll be good. The question is, are, uh, did they properly New right. Jersey it? Yeah, like, we there's, need to there's know the right it, way to do it. Yeah, I need to know if it's accurate. I, like I, <laughs> like everything they do there is good. I need I need accuracy. Right, like, that's why we need you. All right, uh, another question here. What what pro quarterbacks do you watch that you're like this is this is where I'm learning stuff. I like Matt Stafford a lot. Mm. Um, I feel like he is one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the NFL right now. Um. I feel like when he was in Detroit, you take him off that team, they're winning two or three games a year. Yeah. And I feel like he carried them to a 500 record, which is like crazy to say, but I mean, he did not have uh, too much help around him. I mean, obviously when he had Calvin Johnson, um, you know, they, they were pretty good, but I mean, I, I feel like he's criminally underrated. He goes to LA, wins a Super Bowl. So mm-hmm. I like watching Matt Stafford a lot. Um, Rogers is, is fun to watch, although some of the stuff he does is just like, you can't can't do it. You can't replicate it. Like yeah. he, he's one of one. Um, so I'd probably say Matt Stafford is is my favorite to watch. Obviously, Mahomes is kind of in that same boat as a uh, as Rogers. Like you can't learn it, right? Like yeah, he's I mean, thrown behind the back. Some passes. of that <laughs> stuff is just on a different different level. Um, yeah, and then obviously uh, CJ uh, as well. Mm-hmm. Sitting under uh, him for two years was was really good. And then uh, watching him last year was a lot of fun. Like. I told people like before the season, um, he's going to elevate that team. Um, I feel like one, because of his leadership. And then two, I feel like his game uh, was going to translate really well to the NFL. I feel like he throws with really good anticipation. Uh, his footwork is always uh, really clean. He sees the field well, uh, which is all traits that you need to have success on, on Sunday. So I'd probably say CJ and then uh, Matt Stafford were 
the two biggest ones. Uh, and CJ Stroud, I mean, just said one of the best rookie seasons ever for a quarterback. And it was strange, right? Like he went two in the draft. Not people yeah. weren't sure of what he was going to be. When you're in the same locker room with a guy like that, like how sure are you? Are there questions? Or you're like, no, this this guy. Yeah, like, this is this is a guy. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, sitting behind him. Obviously, people see what he does when he goes out there on Saturday, but seeing the way he prepared throughout the week, and then on top of that, seeing the way he practiced, like every single day he brought it. And even on a bad day for him, he was really good. And that's when I kind of realized, okay, like if if I want to get to where I want to be, like this is how I have to play, practice, prepare every single day. Uh, and I think just his level of consistency um, – just set him apart like he, he every single time he steps on the field like he's going to do his job yeah we got a few more coming in in the chat uh pop your chat questions in the chat here uh for kyle here's a not the real hooper this kind of goes back to our fantasy football question a little who who talks the most trash talk on the team and this may be the same answer who is the best at trash talking on the team um could be a different answer yeah i would say uh on defense fidel Diggs. um He's going to let you hear it if he makes a play, um, which is fine with me. Um, and then uh, Devin Grant, too, okay. at corner. I feel like if, if you play corner, uh, you have to be a little crazy, a little delusional, a little cocky because, you know, you're on an island the mm-hmm. entire game. Uh, but I would say those two talk a lot. But I'm going to say the best uh, trash talker is uh, LaQuint. Because, I mean... Like he gets you with the little ones, right? Yeah, I mean, he, he, I mean he'll say something and then... The next play, he's going to, you know, put his shoulder down and just run somebody over. So he backs it up. So I'll give LaQuint best trash talker. Yeah, that's good follow-up. Like, here's trash talk, and then I run you over. Exactly. Like, that's a good follow-up yeah. uh, uh, to trash talk. All right. Uh, somebody in here wants to know about our guy, uh, Dan Valari. Who is this? Uh, Mayamo 23. So, like, Dan obviously had a very weird year last year. Mm-hmm. All the quarterbacks get hurt. He's playing, like, this crazy role. Arande's out. He's a tight end. He's a quarterback. He's a running back. Well, what's Dan for you guys this year? And we, we talked so much about Aronde. Like, how much do you think we'll see both of them out there together being weapons for you? Yeah, I think uh, talking to Dan, I didn't realize this. So he came here as a quarterback um, and then uh, went through a full year of quarterback and then going into last year, uh, got hurt in spring ball. Um, so he was sidelined a little bit and then came back. And so this is really his first offseason season fully being a tight end, right? being a healthy tight end. And I never realized that. And so seeing Dan's growth at tight end um, from January when uh, we kind of got back from the ball game and, you know, he got back in that tight end role to now is night and day. Um, And I think Coach Johnson, the tight ends coach, really did a good job with him, uh, just coaching him up. And I feel like he uh, is just a student of the game, uh, really studying it, and he's done a great job. And I feel like the best thing that he and OG do is they complement each other well. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, both have really good skill sets, but are both very different. Um, And so I feel like the uh, if you can get him on the field, which I feel like we've been doing a good job of getting him on the field at the same time, uh, it's really good. And and using them in in different areas and uh, maximizing their skill sets, I feel like it's going to present some challenges to the defense. All right, here's a very important question. You obviously were an Ohio State quarterback. Dan's career started at Michigan. As yeah. a, I forget, is he a year older than you? I've kind of yeah, lost one, yeah, Is he one year older than you? Yeah. So I, he would have been gone, I guess, before you, you got there. But like, is there is there a weird beef? Do you have like weird yeah. beef? We actually we played each other in uh, twenty twenty one. Okay, was he still there? Yeah, he's okay. still there in twenty twenty one. Um, so I mean, it, it's crazy. I mean, hearing some of the stories that he tells uh, about being at you know the other school in the rivalry, and then mm-hmm. some of the stories I tell, it's it's so funny, um, and like. You know, you you're, you grow up, um, and then you you end up going to two completely different uh, rival schools, and then ending up on the same team. And now I'm throwing the ball to him. Like it's just it's crazy how it all worked out. But I mean, some of the stories he tells is just hilarious because I'm on the other side of it, and yeah. I know exactly what we're thinking. It's just yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. Well, you I mean, you're both. I mean, you'll be a year removed from it. He's multiple. Years. Like, will you guys watch that game later this year? Yeah. Like, is that a thing or yeah. no? Yeah, no, we'll definitely watch it together. Um, you know, like like I said, I mean, the the 2021 game when we played against each other uh, was wild. I mean, he he'll he'll show me like uh, some of videos he has in the locker room like okay. after the game, and then 
Because that was like the first time they beat you guys forever that year. Yeah. Yeah. And then like knowing that I'm like 40, 50 feet the opposite direction, the other locker room. Just no, like, like you never met or yeah, anything. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it is, it is pretty cool to, to talk uh, with him about stuff like that. Crazy. Crazy. I, I'm sure he'd be happy too. I maybe uh, to never take a snap again after the end of <laughs> last year. I, I, my thought is like some of that stuff actually worked kind of well. It might yeah. be like, I, I'm sure you like the ball starting in your hands. It, it might not be a yeah. bad idea. Like once a game, maybe snapping yeah. the ball or something. No, I mean what, what he did last year is impressive. I think him and LaQuint, um, it was wild. Yeah, I think uh, people owe them a lot of respect. I think you go back and you watch those games. Like teams were loading the box against them. They got hit a lot. Yeah, they got hit a lot. I mean, Dan LaQuint, or, you know, they both tell you, like, it was three yards and a headache every time. Like, mm-hmm. coming down, you're getting hit. Um, but to to will them uh, to a bowl game last year, given the circumstances, uh, was impressive. Yeah, won two games that way, which is yeah. mind-boggling, all things considered. All right, man. I, I, I think that's gonna that's gonna wrap up our first Kyle McCord show. There we go. How are you feeling there? One in the books. Yeah, I start. There he is. Kyle McCord every Tuesday. We'll try to get some guys on with Kyle throughout the season. Load up the chat. More questions like that. We'll see you on the field on Saturday. Good luck, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. All right. Orange Nation.